So the guest that I am talking to today is a singer songwriter, an actor, a trans representative, a beautiful tra proud trans woman, all in all amazing performer, Jessica Stratton. How are you today? I am very good, thank you. And thank you for that really lovely introduction. That's very kind of you. Thank That's, you. It's all true. It's all true. So wow. thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Really, you're welcome. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you. You are one interesting lady. Uh, should we start it off? Um, so my first question for you is where did your love of songwriting come from? Where did it start? So you are a songwriter and you're working on your album. But yeah, where did it all start? Where did it all begin? Well, I learned to play the snowman when I was five years old and um, then had music lessons up until I was like eight, piano lessons, and I hated reading music. Um, so it was just like, I don't want to do these piano lessons anymore. I want to just play myself, which is what I did. And I just started playing with chords, making up melodies. And as a child, it was really hard for me to articulate how I was feeling, especially being so different um, and it being back in the early 80s as well. So I just found that lyrics just, naturally came to me and I'd be sat at the piano I'd play a chord and I'd just start singing a line to it and it just it was so freeing and it was it was an instant connection and and it just it grew from there I found that I could write my feelings put it into song and it would make me feel better wow it just it sounds like it was just a natural thing for you Absolutely, totally. Just a, a way of coping with things, really. It was a coping mechanism. Yeah, okay. And what age were you, do you think, when you when this started happening? Um, so I, st I mean, I remember the first song I wrote, but it was off the piano and it was one way to carry me, one way to carry me, one way to carry me home. And I think it was about my parents being at the pub every night, which is quite funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, Oh, if you don't laugh, it you was, cry. That's what we both laugh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was actually when I got to secondary school that I really uh, started writing music. Um, the music room was my sanctuary at school and it was my safe haven. Um, I went to an all boys school because um, my femininity was uh, not liked back then. So it was send them to a boys school and we'll drum it out of you. But unfortunately, it wasn't like that. And it was a really tough time. But like I said, the music room was my sanctuary. It was my safe place. It's where I used to hide. And that's where the songwriting really started because I would sing about how I was feeling and the situations going on. And it was actually at school when I was 15 that I, I wrote the song I Pulled Through, which is actually going on the album. And to, to think that that song is nearly 15 years old is... Uh, no, oh my gosh, it's nearly 25 years old is ridiculous. Wow. Ridiculous. 25 years old almost. Wow. Okay, that's just shocked me. <laughs> yeah, but a good song is a good song no matter uh, no oh, matter how absolutely. Much absolutely. Time has passed. And yeah. it's a song that's actually come leaps and bounds over the years because you know you you grow and that song becomes maturer, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And that's beautiful because it, it that comes from such an authentic place and it was so cathartic totally. for you at the time. And uh, how did your um, transition inspire your creative adventures? So, so could you speak a bit about your transition um, and then how that affected your songwriting or? The Absolutely. Author? I mean, it affected it massively in the beginning, but not in a positive way, unfortunately. Um, I went to the Brit school straight from secondary school. I was very lucky to get in there, but when I got there and I started my transition, people just didn't get it. It was the late nineties. It was still very closed doors, behind closed doors, you know, don't talk about it. And the industry really just laughed it off. So it really put a setback for me and my music writing and my piano playing. And I actually lost my passion for it for, gosh, the best part of 10 years because I was so scared to come back to it because of how the industry was when I first transitioned. But then I found myself and I learned to love myself 
um, I've become comfortable in my skin and my confidence has grown and I've just got to a place in my life where it's just like what you see is what you get this is who I am and I'm going to be an inspiration and represent and now that is my headspace it has changed my songwriting massively I got back into songwriting four years ago and brushing up my skills on the piano and I'm at a place now where my transition is at the forefront of my songwriting hence the album which is coming which is going to be called Transparent so it's all about me authentic me being an open book um that's such yeah a and hopefully name. it can uh, inspire a few people great name for an album I'm dying I'm dying to to get that album I can't wait I can't wait there's going to be a little collab on there as well Oh, we might say something towards the end about that. Totally. Just wondering, uh, so you kind of uh, put it to the wayside while you were transitioning. It was very hard. Just wondering what you did then um, when you weren't doing music. So I was in a hairdressing and makeup artist background. And I also make wigs, believe it or not. So um, that really took up a lot of my creative time because it was still being creative, you know, doing makeup and doing hair. Um, so that fed my creativity, but I never stopped singing melodies in my head and writing little lyrics in my head, but I would just never put pen to paper and I, or I'd never come to a piano and try and work it out. So, uh, although I was still mentally being creative, so yeah, it did, uh, it took over my life for a while, my transition. So um, right up until I was like 27 when I finalised my transition and I'm now 38 so I've spent the last 11 years maturing as as the proud confident woman that I am now. Yeah you're absolutely beautiful and you're thank you so much. You're such a performer as well um, you know when I see you, you you put everything into it it's not just writing the songs and playing the music but you put your whole soul and your body into it all the absolutely time. because I just it's it's it becomes a feeling for me rather than just a song or a lyric when I'm playing something and I'm singing something it's about a time that I've gone through it's almost like in that moment I'm speaking to my soul it's not and my fingers and my voice are just telling the story for me yeah I don't know if that makes sense it does it does to me um as a as a fellow songwriter it does definitely to me um but I also know that you do other things like your acting um could you tell me a bit about how how did how did that happen and, and what's going on with that well um it was August last year um, I was just like, right, I, I want to get back into acting because I, I studied it at the Brit School. But again, the industry didn't like trans people back then, but they do now. <laughs> and I put a post up on an actors group on Facebook, which has a platform of like 70,000 people. I put headshots up there and a little bio about myself. And it kind of went crazy. It like got uh, 1,500 likes in 24 hours all these comments and then an agent reached out to me and said I actually have a job for you to audition for if you would like to please contact me so I did and I did a zoom audition for a part called Jackie um, for a huge corporate company called Deloitte and it was about inclusivity in the workplace so I got the part and it was playing a trans woman called Jackie and the script was so beautifully written and it was literally just kind of a mirror of my life and what I'd been through. It almost felt like I approached it like singing a song. I just put all my feeling and authenticity into it and related to what I was saying. And then that led to me getting on BBC One and I was on the final episode of This Is My House with Stacey Dooley and I played Erica too. And it was brilliant. It was so much fun. And that led to something bigger, which unfortunately has just been dropped by Channel 4. I'm not impressed. But yeah. hey, listen, these things happen in the industry and you just keep pushing forward, never give up and uh, keep believing in yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's quite big. The, the, that's not my house, isn't it? Um, yeah, this is my house. It's done really well. It's been nominated um, for a TV Choice Award, I believe. 
So um, but we obviously don't... it was the cast that made it. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, of course. Yeah, oh, I had so much fun. It was brilliant. It was really fun to be a part of and a great platform form um for a trans woman like myself to start being that representation for the UK that I really am striving to be yeah yeah and just being such an inspiration for so many people who are totally and also I hope it helps my music yeah of course yeah with the domino it's been really important to me and it was the thing that I love most about being a songwriter is having the ability to make people stop and listen to you and that's such a beautiful thing because if somebody likes what they hear, they will stop and listen to the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly you have this voice. I know for, for me personally with songwriting, I felt very, um, growing up, I felt very invisible and uh, not heard. And I suppose Absolutely. songs were a way to be heard, you know? Absolutely. And it brought us together as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, I remember because uh, myself and Jess are cousins. I will say that. Yeah, uh, indeed. My dad's side. So my dad and her dad, uh, brothers. Um, yeah. So that's why that's how we're cousins. And I would have um, the first. Yeah, I would have known you all the way up along. And I remember listening to you playing the piano and singing before you transitioned, way before you even uh, transitioned. Oh, gosh, yes. It was, it was beautiful even back then. You were so talented, you know. You were always so talented. Thank you so much. As for you, as for you, <laughs> I remember going to our grandma's house um, as a kid and a teenager. And she'd always say, oh, you and Sean, you need to get together. You need to do this <laughs> together. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Love grandma. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are going to uh, do a, a collab. Uh, we are indeed. I'm so excited about it. I really am. So tell tell us about the album that you're working on. Lovely. So the album, like I said, is called Transparent, and it's a collection of songs that I've written over, gosh, the last near 25 years. Um, so there's some songs in there that are really old, like I said, a song from school I pulled through, um, which has matured over time. And there's songs in there about my family. Um, you know, I'm happy to sit here and admit that I come from a broken family, but that's actually made me stronger and it's empowered me um, to be the representation that I want to be today because I really want to make things a safer space for other people. And that really is my premise. So the album talks about everything that I've been through in life and just, yeah, just puts it into song. And I really hope that people can take some solace from it and uh, not feel so alone. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, so absolutely. Alone. And and especially for um, anybody embarking on transitioning or living, you know, living. Totally. And it's telling my story through music. And, you know, people can interpret music however they want to and interpret lyrics however they want to. So I really hope that it's not just trans people, but it's all people that can translate my lyrics to something that helps them in something in their life. Yeah, the struggle, because everybody's totally. going through it, yeah. Struggle is real. Struggle is real, I know. Struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and talking about struggle, right? Uh, um, as a songwriter, uh, performer, actor, uh, you must have come uh, up against so many rejections. I know I have. Uh, how do you handle the rejections, the constant rejections? So, Because I, I know some people, they get rejected maybe a handful of times and they're like, that's it, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. But for some reason, you kept going. Tell me why. Well, if I'm honest, um, rejection has been a part of my life since I was very, very young. And I kind of got over rejection, but not quickly. It took me up until I was in my 30s. It took for me to find myself, that love for myself, to say, who can reject me? Because the only person that can't reject you is yourself. So never reject yourself. Let other people reject you. That's fine. But just know that as long as you keep believing in yourself and keep carrying on, there will be that one person that doesn't reject you and that will be your stepping stone and that will be your way forward. So just keep believing and never give up because yeah. no one has the right to tell you 
that you're no good at what you do. Yeah. Only you have that right to tell yourself if you if you know you need to believe in yourself. That's all yeah. I that. Probably the best way that I can put it. it so rejection for me is just say thank you. Wasn't the right time or I wasn't for you. That's absolutely fine. Carry on doing what you're doing and know that you deserve it. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Uh, what is coming up for you? What are you? So besides the album, are you? Uh, do you have any plans to any project? Oh, absolutely. It's all about watch this space at the moment. You know, I'm I'm trying to grow my social media and get myself a little bit of a platform there. Um, I'm currently doing quite a few auditions. I've just uh, done an audition this morning uh, before seeing you. So I'm a busy girl. I'm off down to London at the end of the month as well. So lots of exciting things happening. Lots of stuff I'm unable to talk about under NDA. So, but yeah, there's lots of exciting things to come. Hopefully some really big television appearances that will hope, hopefully help promote the album as well. So you get to hear the music as well. Yeah, that would be the that would be perfection, wouldn't it? Really, absolutely. Because for me, it's all it's all about being on a platform to be that representation for the trans community, especially trans kids. You know, I don't want them to live in a world that I lived in, and if I can be that that representation and help people be more mindful and compassionate towards trans people, and um, that is, you know, that's my main goal. And um, if one voice can make a difference it's better than no voice making no difference and that's how I see my my way forward so fingers yeah. crossed oh beautiful beautiful and do you Thank think you. That things are getting better absolutely absolutely things are things are really on the way up for me at the moment um since December I decided well at end of December new year I made the uh, resolution to um be healthy and uh, so I've completely changed uh, the way I ate. I've started exercising. I've lost three stone. I'm in the best shape of my life. My confidence is through the roof. And I'm just really excited to get out there, be creative, um, mingle with everyone and yeah, get my story across. Great. And it's such an amazing story. You're a real fighter, you know, you're a real... Yeah, you're a real go-getter. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So so tell me, tell us how do we find you on social media? Where where do you want to be contacted? Brilliant. So my my main um, social media is Instagram, and that's it's Jessica Stratton, which is I T S Jessica Stratton or one word. Um, and over at Twitter, it's J Stratton. So I T S J Stratton um so yeah you can follow me there I'm always uh, putting little posts up on Instagram there are some snippets of the songs going on the album on there as well and um, you can see some of the creative processes of some of the songs on there which is lovely for people to see because they, they look forward to the end result so awesome and uh for the listeners um when I post this podcast we will of course include all of uh, Jessica's links so that you can go and click on it and check her out and follow her definitely follow her um absolutely amazing story amazing amazing woman and i just wonder um so tell me a bit more about this collaboration <laughs> We're coming oh up. yeah so i've I'm, um i've got a collaboration coming up with a very very talented beautiful soulful individual that is such an inspiration to me is the lovely Sean Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. And I mean that. You're such an inspiration to me and always have been. I've always looked up to you growing up and just always been so in awe of your music skills and your talent and your songwriting. And it it's inspired me to do what I do today. So oh my goodness. Well, vice versa completely vice versa I've always been in awe of you and everything that you've done and accomplished and you've just you've never taken no for an answer and you've always absolutely not in. And stand up to adversity say f you and be true to yourself and just be you yeah and just never give up on your dreams and that's exactly. something exactly never give up hashtag never give up 
Yeah, yeah. And that's hugely <laughs> important in my life as well. Never give up. No matter how many people tell you, you can't do this, you're not this enough, you can't just, just, it doesn't matter. Just never give up. It's you. This is your life. Do what you love. Absolutely. And you so I have started writing um, uh, the song for the collaboration and I've already spoken to Sean about it and I'm going to let her write the second verse, which is going to be awesome. So um, I'm really excited for people to hear that because it's a little bit more upbeat than what I normally do, but still kind of got that ballady feel to it at the same time, which I love. It's, 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 it's very me and I can't wait to have you in it as well. Oh, well, I can't wait to be in it. And the little snippet you've showed me, I love it. Love, love, love it. So I'm Excellent. really looking forward to that. And me I would love too. To I can't wait for you to get the guitar out and play it. Oh, <laughs> I, I can't wait uh, for one day to share a stage with you. Uh, that's that's what I'm really looking for. And listen, that is going to happen. Yeah. 100%. And you and me. When, give you, it when, when you make it big before me, I, I <laughs> obviously I will be your warm up. Of course. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we'll both prop each other up, yeah. Excellent. Now, um, I've got a few quick fire questions, but before I do, um, is there anything, so is there anything that you want to, um, to talk about? Because um, I know it's me asking you the questions, but like, is there anything that you want to talk about, about anything really, about songwriting, acting, about being trans, anything? I think if I had any kind of closing statement, um, all I'd really like to say is that trans women are women and I am so grateful and so humbled to be invited onto this podcast for empowering women uh, because I am a woman and I really hope the world becomes more mindful and compassionate towards trans women um, because this really wasn't my choice, this is who I am. And I hope that you see that in my music and I'm excited to share my story with everyone. So really, it's just a big thank you from me to you. To, and you've made me feel very included. So thank you. Oh, well, I just think you're amazing. I've always thought- I think you're amazing. <laughs> We're so amazing. <laughs> We're so amazing. Stop it. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to when I can come and see you. And, and uh... Oh, me too. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's been too How long. How have you been uh, do? How have you been coping with all the uh, COVID nineteen stuff and the lockdowns and everything like that? Um, the first two lockdowns, I wasn't a fan of. I must admit. Um, so when it comes to the third lockdown, I was just like, again, I'm not going to let this beat me. So I'm going to utilize it and make the best of it. And I have done. I've lost weight. I've been writing new material. Um, my acting's taken off. I just spent that time to really concentrate on myself and be positive on myself. And it's made such a huge difference. Yeah, great. Yeah. And have you been able to work at all or? Um... Uh, well, just with the acting stuff, um, that uh, was before the third lockdown. So it didn't coincide with the lockdown at all. So when it comes to working, I haven't I haven't done any work during lockdown apart from working towards stuff that's coming out in the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So working on the album, working on my creativity, doing lots of auditions and stuff like that, working on my social media. Um, so that's what's been keeping me busy and working out and e eating healthy. So that's really taken up all my time. So yeah. I'm just keeping my mind busy. Yeah, sounds like you're keeping busy and you're keeping positive, which is great. Absolutely. You've got to. You've got to. So now the lockdown's coming to an ease. I'm hoping that work's going to pick up now, which I'm sure it will do. Yeah, I'm sure it will too. I don't know what it's uh, like in the UK at the moment. Um, we're still a good bit away from things opening up properly, but I think you guys are, are quite open. Oh, you'd think, you'd think that there was no lockdown now in England. Really? Yeah, people are so gone ho um, but come Monday, with the pubs um, opening up and hospitality opening up and restaurants, I should imagine things are going to go back to relative normality, as in a pandemic normality, not pre-COVID, like yeah. after the last lockdown. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm just really looking forward to gigs. That's what I'm looking forward to. Me too. I'm just looking forward to surrounding myself with creative people, going to open mic nights before um, the first lockdown. That's what I was doing. And 
it changed my world. So I can't wait to get back to open mic nights and performing because honestly, the world is my runway and I utilize that. <laughs> so. wow. And, and how, how did it change your world, the open mic nights? I had never felt so free and I'd never felt so celebrated and so included and for people to relate to what I was saying and then come up to me like one person even thanked me and it just made my legs tremble because I was just like really like oh my gosh you have no idea what that means and the energy and the aura that you get from being on stage and sharing your soul with people oh it look it's it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it, it honestly it's it, it's it's passion yeah and it is a very unique energy exchange isn't it being up on totally stage. it's a shared energy it's not just you putting it out you're getting it back too exactly exactly and it just it does so much for my mental health yeah 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 so cathartic yeah totally oh well i could talk to you all day and we've only i know literally scratched the surface of who you are like honestly you're such a um it's a long road <laughs> <laughs> it is it is girl <laughs> it is i think you've got some quick fire questions for me as well don't you before we go yeah, yeah. so are you ready for these quick fire questions go for it a set of questions and these you haven't heard these before these are completely off the top of your head if money was no object what would you be doing now oh uh, gosh flying around the world nice just seeing the world seeing the world <laughs> and performing to people <laughs> honestly i'd take my piano with me nice nice so you would like gig around the world totally and just take inspiration from every corner of the universe Beautiful, beautiful. I'll come too. So what are you grateful for? Oh, I'm grateful for my family. Beautiful. Totally. Can you finish this sentence? Creativity is? Empowerment. Amazing. Your favorite TV show? This is my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really it's not really so i'm really sad i love i'm i'm addicted to the big bang the big bang theory I oh i love it. Of it i yeah. love it yeah it's funny um first album first well the first first album i ever bought was called was something to remember by madonna madonna what a yeah, queen. I know, but my sister was an avid Madonna fan as well, so I never had to buy any. But then when that came out, I was like, no, I'm buying that. And I did. <laughs> Madonna, nice one. Okay. Um, Favourite snack? <gasps> oh, dates and peanut butter. Yum. That's yes. Mm, nice one. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee, okay. What calms you when you're stressed? Oh, I don't think I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's vegan <laughs> what, did you, what did you say but it's vegan okay <laughs> okay are you a vegan you are i am indeed yes okay. i love being vegan um it makes me feel very pure and how, how how long have you been vegan it's been nearly five years now wow thanks to your darling sister <laughs> yeah yeah she's a she's a great uh, advocate for veganism love her yeah yeah um okay last quick fire question if you had one piece of advice for women out there what would it be follow your heart oh yeah totally follow your heart I, the head can confuse us so much in life but just remember to stay true to yourself and be yourself and remember that you're beautiful and you deserve everything that you deserve. You truly do, Jess, you really, really do. And you are just an inspiration to me and hopefully so many more other people. I just can't believe your determination in life and, and uh, just 
so focused and striving to to follow your dreams and follow your heart and yeah i i i'm just in awe of of you and everything that you've accomplished thank you and vice versa honestly honestly i'm really honored to be a part of your podcast today anything oh. for you honey Oh, you too, you too. And I must get you to make me a wig because I love wigs. Uh, for Absolutely. Sure. I'm sporting one that I've made today. You made that yourself. Beautiful. I sure did, honey. I sure did. For those of you just listening, uh, Jess has a beautiful, long, sleek brown wig on uh, that she's made herself. Stunning, stunning. How, how do you, uh, really, really, really quickly, how do you do that? So it's a, it's a pre-made wig cap and you sew the wefts of hair onto it. And then there's a lace section coming down the part in and you hand tie hair for it one at a time. So it looks like the hair coming out of the scalp. Because two months ago, I had a hair transplant to lower my front hairline. It's something that I've always wanted to do for many years. And I was like, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to treat myself. So they shaved the underneath of my hair. And obviously, I've got a new patch at the front. So my hair looks a bit funky at the moment. Hence why I'm sporting a beautiful long tresses that I'm wearing today. But oh. I love it. How long does it take you to make one of those? That sounds like a long time. Uh, something like this probably takes about a week. But if it was a full lace wig, a full lace wig, that would take about two months. Wow, you have so many talents. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's just, I'm just very creative. That's the way I see it. Yeah, that's it. It must run in the family, this like mad. Absolutely. Creativity. Keep it in the family. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, singer, songwriter, actor, um, wig maker, makeup artist, hairdresser, uh, God, so many other things probably. You've been such wow. a pleasure to talk to and I am so, so um, grateful to have you on here. I just think that you're amazing. Your story is amazing and people should definitely, definitely go and check you out, check out all your links, go and follow and uh, show support and show support for just uh, an amazing proud trans woman and uh, just an amazing all-round performer in general you're far too kind thank, thank you so much and it's been my absolute pleasure thank you so much honestly yeah nice and uh, we'll catch up again soon absolutely take care guys thank you for having me bye bye jess